<laughs> so my topic for today, by the way, I'm very proud to be um, for our guest. Um, welcome to Guys Master. My topic for today is about like my troubles last week when I was um, when I was working on one task at work, and this is pretty much me when I was like working. It's like I'm just so disappointed because you know as a developer you have like a moment where you think you're coding something and in theory it should work, right? So um, what I'm going to talk about today is access modified closure. Who is using ReSharper here? Okay, so there's three of us here, or four. Um, access modified closure. I've encountered this last week. So um, by the way, um, this speech of mine is pretty much intended for developers. So I'm sorry for non-developers because I might bore you with this speech. So what is closure? Closure is essentially a, a block of code that can be passed as an argument to a function call. So going back to the Jurassic era, so I'm pretty much a developer started late 90s and early 2000s. So I, you know, I've read small talk during my college book, but I never really used it. So closure, according to Martin Kohler, is started with small talk, which is in small talk, it's called blocks. And also in list. You know, both these programming language languages read it but never really used it. So it's been there for a longest time, but you know, as a developer started in two thousand, never heard of it. So this is really new to me. So I'm sorry for the people who know this. But so what is this this in C sharp? C sharp is our current right current version right now is C sharp. And this has been introduced in anonymous method. So Martin Fowler said that this closure method is also introduced in C sharp by anonymous method. So for a demo, here. I'm going to show you. I'm going to run this. Sorry for my example because I'm a female and I'm a developer, so I use shoes for my example. So I have a shoe collection here. And then in my shoe collection, I have prices. You know, these are my favorite shoes and these are the prices of my favorite shoes. So my husband wants to know how, how, what's the total price of all these shoes? So, if you look at the bottom click command there, is this one right here. Can you see it? Yeah. So, I'm using a lambda expression here. And uh, so, in theory, what do you think is going to be the result of this? So, I have this total price, which is a list funk, and I keep on adding the price. So what's gonna be my display? If I can find mine. Yeah. So with that code, I would think if I can find this, there you go. With that code, I would think I would place like 100, 150, 150, 450. Right? Because I added that in my collection of my list. But if I click this, I have 450, I have 450 again, and then I have 450. So I have, I keep on saying 450, 450, 450 instead of 100, 150, 150, 450. So what's up with that? So is it really a true closure that's what they're introducing in C-sharp. And by the way, to step back a little bit, if you search on it, Microsoft, is, it's not really a bug. I mean, it's been reported to Microsoft several times and that people think it's a bug, but it's really not because it's supposed how it works. Because why? When I'm using the anonymous method, it means that give me the current value of the variable S, not return the value of um, S that was back when the delegate was created, so it should be S. Um, it should be. So what I'm asking is the value of the variable. 
give me the current value of the variable and not the value that when the delegate was created. So what does it mean? When um, in the interest of time, I didn't. I should have posted when I checked the reflector. Reflector is one of the goals that I really like because you can dig deeper for what's really going on. So um, with the reflector, you will see that this total price right here, the S, is not being changed because it's within in that um, close. Remember the definition of closure? It's the same value all over again. It's not refreshing. But so how can we make this right? If I introduce another value, um, if I can stop this, so if I'm going to introduce another value here, let's say. So what's really happening in the memory is it's on its same value all the time. So if I introduce this, see that bar xx equal s, it means I will create, logically I'm creating fresh values. So if I run this, I will have, one second here. You took out your phone. I did. Yeah. That's the phone again, right? Alright. Should I use the Mac? Huh? <laughs> Anybody's ever been frustrated with Visual Studio? Alright, so don't look at it. Okay, so here. This stuff's much better. Alright, so what's really happening going back is it's not, it's returning the current value. So here, oh, what did I do? You're not using SS, are you? Create mm -hmm. that X up there. You're not using that. Oh, yeah. So what I'm going to show you is so this is 450, 450, 450, and now by just adding another value in that closure, in that for each, it, I'm getting the right one, the one that's supposed to work. 100, 150, 150, 450. So in conclusion, so it's giving me the current value of the variable s. So in conclusion, closure in C sharp is not really a true lexical closure. It's closure close over variables and not over values. So I know um, if we're using lambda and anonymous method, we get bitten by that once in a while. I've been bitten by that twice already. So it's really just nice to know going back of what's really going on and. Um, if you have reflector, you can dig deeper and see how um, it's processing inside um, inside the um, function. So here are my references, and that's it. Thank you very much.